Do you know what to do when you sleep with someone you do not trust without protection? Or you slept with this person with protection, but along the way, the condom busts. What do you do? Do you understand their HIV status? Do you know that they have STIs? By the way, what if they impregnate you when you are not willing? All this in the video where we are talking about the steps, what to do immediately and what to do after to avoid the things you do not want. Ask Dr. Othman Kusawawo. Hello my very good viewers, welcome to Ask Dr. Uthman YouTube channel, a channel where learn medicine at the comfort of your living room. I told you if you would like to get in touch with me, have a private chat, go to my website www.drusman.com and book an appointment. I will be right there to answer you, to chat with you. And for those of you who are viewing this for the very first time, please do not forget to subscribe and also press the notification bell in order to be notified of any important videos we upload. Become a member of our channel by joining our channel and enjoy a lot of privileges. Yes. Today we have a very serious question and I think I need to answer this person. This question goes like, uh, this one is called Joy Macklin saying, Good day doc, I have a question. Yesterday I slept with someone whom I don't trust so much. So she doesn't trust this person and I think this happens to many women out there, even men and so on. You may sleep with someone you don't trust or maybe it was accidental. I don't know, you, there are very many situations you people uh, find yourselves into. So uh, he's saying she slept with someone she does not trust so much. It was our first time but along the way the condom broke. <laughs> Dilemma. And he removed it. He didn't tell me until we finished. I am so scared on what to do because the guy even switched off his phone. Now, these people had unprotected sex per se. In other words, okay, all right, they had protected sex at first, but along the way, the condom broke, the guy removed it and did not tell the lady. And now the lady is scared on what to do. So if it's you, what do you do? Most of you I know will only rush to one thing. One thing, and that is emergency contraception. That's what most women do. The moment they are not prepared for sex and they have had it live, the moment the condom bursts, they will all run for emergency pills. And that's the only thing they think about. But there is a lot we are supposed to do. So now, when this happens to you, the first thing you should do is to go, in other words, immediately, you go and urinate. Someone is going to ask me, what is the importance of urination? So, the first step is urinate. Urinate. Why am I urinating? Because when you sleep with someone you do not trust, there are several things that we expect, or several things that may come up and you do not want them to happen to you. Number one, before we even think about this, number one is that you may contract HIV. Number two is that you may contract other STIs, sexually transmitted infections. There are many, and we shall be listing them. There are many. You may contract HIV, you may get STIs, but also you can get unwanted pregnancy. You can get unwanted pregnancy. So, of course, also the psychological torture. Maybe we can talk about the psychological, the psych, the psychological torture. But most importantly, it is these ones. You are likely to get HIV, you are likely to get other STIs, you are likely to conceive especially if you are in your fertile window. Now, what you are, you are going to do will depend on these ones, on what you don't want to happen. Now, if you want, uh, if, if you're okay with getting pregnant, then there are some steps you not follow. If you're okay with getting STIs, of which I don't know if there is anyone okay with that, then if you're not okay with getting HIV, then you are, you're going to follow these steps. Now, with urinating or peeing immediately, this is going to prevent you or it's going to reduce your chances of getting these STIs and UTIs. Because it is known that the bacteria, the germ that causes a UTI, the germ that causes, the, the, the germs that cause STIs, some of them are found on the skin, on the outer part. 
Now for the youth eyes, they are some most of them are found outside the urethra, just around there. And by having sexual intercourse, in other words, sex uh, moves it faster. Okay? Moves it faster either to, to, to enter the urethra or mix, uh, mixing, mi mixing up in the V. Okay? So now, when you've had any protected sexual intercourse, all the condom broke, and you've just realized it, go to the bathroom and pee. Urinate. When you urinate, you'll flush out a few. Some might have reached somewhere far, but you can flush out a few of them. And by the at times, you can even flush out all of them because there are some of the, most of them are still near. So you go and pee, okay? Urinate and flush out those infections that might have entered the urethra, okay? And also uh, shower. Shower and remove anything you can remove outside there. Because at times, you, you, for, for, for the infections or for the germs that will have entered in the V, maybe still somewhere there in the vulva, maybe in the, uh, the low, the, at the lower end of the vagina, you can flush them out. Okay? You can wash yourself. In other words, you can, you can, you can shower, uh, try to wash around, wash the, the, the urethral area and so on. You will have reduced a few of those bacteria. But that is not enough. What is the second thing you are supposed to do after that? The second thing you are supposed to do, if this person is still around, if your, if your, if your spouse is still around, make sure that you test the following. Yourself, you have to test for number one, HIV. Because you may think that this person is going to infect you when you're already infected. So you must test for HIV. So we must have test for both patterns. You must test yourself for HIV and also your partner should be tested for HIV. So we are now talking about a situation when the partner is still around, your spouse is still around. If they have run away like this one, who ran away and switched off the phone, then you have nothing to do. Test yourself alone. So you're going to do an HIV test. Secondly, you're going to do a pregnancy test. You are going to do a pregnancy test. It's not that when you've had uh, sex, uh, sex immediately, it's not that you're going, the pregnancy test is going to show whether it's positive or negative. In other words, it's going to show positive if you conceived. No, that's not what, what we are meaning. We want to be sure that you are not pregnant before. Okay? Because we may, we may think that it is this guy who has impregnated you later when already you are pregnant. So, you need to do a pregnancy test. Then three, you are going to test for STIs. You are going to test for STIs. Now, with these STIs, you are going to test for something called chlamydia. There is an infection called chlamydia, a bacteria called chlamydia. There is another one you need to test which is called syphilis. You need test for that. Test for, test for syphilis. Then another one, gonorrhea. Why are we saying that you should test them immediately? Because we do not want you to think that it is the other person who caused this when you already had so first, make sure that, in other words, you do the preliminary tests. Find out that you do not have before you start talking about the other party. So now, when you do these tests, for example, you found that you are negative, you don't have, you're, you're not pregnant, you are HIV negative, and these ones are also not there. Let's, let's not even focus on these ones, whether they are there or not. But you are negative HIV and you are pregnant negative. What are you supposed to do? Number one, rush. Rush. Rush and get emergence contraceptives. Emergence contraceptives. Rush and get emergency contraceptives. And I told you in one of my videos that we have several emergency contraceptive options. Okay? We have the pills. Most of you know about uh, the backups, the postino, and so on. So we have those emergency pills. And these ones can work within a period of 72 hours. 
So you, but better to take immediately. The longer the hours, the, the like the, in other words, the higher the efficacy reduces. The efficacy reduces all the the, the protection reduces. So it's better to start it immediately. So you can do emergence contraceptive pills. Then after taking emergence contraceptive pills, if it's not pills, you can also take an IUD. An IUD can, can act as an emergence contraception. So some women, if, if you insert it within a period of 72 hours. By the way, we also say that even if you've delayed, but you've not yet passed five days, because these 72 hours, three days, if it's within the five days, you can still try, though the chances will have, the, the risk will have increased, the chances of, of not conceiving will have reduced, but you can still use it. So with an IUD, uh, uh, you can use the pills, you can use an IUD. So these are the emergence options you can use, and several others can be used. Now, after taking emergence contraceptive pills, all emergence contraceptions. The next one is to take drugs that can, in case, in the case, if this guy was negative, if you found him HIV negative, you don't need to take this, the drugs for HIV. But if you found that this guy is positive, you are going to take what they call PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV. These are like ARVs, they are taken for a period of 28 days. You take them for a period of 28 days. Now, if the guy was positive, you take PEP. But if he was negative, you don't need to take PEP. However, if the guy read, if you cannot access them, you can't, you can't determine the, their HIV status, then you're just going to take the medicine because you're not sure. Now, like for this one, Macklin. The guy ran away, switched off his phone. What you're supposed to do is to take PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis. So you're going to take these medicines for a period of 28 days. 28 days. You're going to take these uh, drugs. Now, after taking PEP, after taking PEP, what are you supposed to do? Because all these steps we've talked about, we've seen the immediate one, do, going there and pee, you pee and then wash all, 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 all shower. Then after that, run tests. After running tests, take the medicines, the two, the PEP and, uh, uh, and the emergence contraceptions. Okay? Now, what is next you're supposed to do? When you reach seven days after that act, seven to ten days, you can now go and do a pregnancy test. Because we know by seven days, if you conceived, we shall see positive results, especially if you've used serum. If you've used blood, all a blood pregnancy test can become positive between seven to ten days. If you use urine, which is the commonest, it will be positive from 10 to 14 days. So on the 14th day, if you test and you are negative, that means you never conceived. Now, after that, we shall say that, because now this is concerning pregnancy, how about infections? We also know that you can, you can test for chlamydia between five to 14 days. Go and test for chlamydia. Find out whether you have it. Chlamydia. Then also, gonorrhea can be tested between 5 to 14 days. Go and confirm that you do not have gonorrhea. Okay? Now, for syphilis, for syphilis, you have to take a long period of time. It starts from 14 days, or what we say, 2 weeks, to 3 weeks. 2 to 3 weeks, that's when you can see the, the syphilis uh, bacteria, so uh, which is called uh, treponema pallidum. So in other words, you can test for a presence of treponema pallidum after two to three weeks. That's when you can do this test. I hope we are very, very clear about this. Now, after doing this, remember, you've now reached three weeks. 
Okay? Three weeks, that's around 21 days. You are still taking your PEP. You are still taking your ARVs. You're still taking your PEP. Now, on the 28th day after taking PEP, go and run an HIV test. <laughs> My friend, there you can see panic. Go and do an HIV test. Confirm whether you got infected or not. Because the HIV test is supposed to be run between three weeks or, or three weeks or 21 days to 90 days, which is the window period. So therefore, within this period, you are supposed to zero convert if you really contracted HIV. So now, what we have seen is that you have done it at first, you've done the tests to confirm that you didn't have anything or you had something. Then after that, you've had some interventions. And the interventions we've seen, you're going to take PEP, you are going to take emergency contraceptive pills. Now, what if you find, later on, what if you find that you have syphilis? After doing those tests, you take the medicines. You take the medicine. Syphilis, we know how we treat it. You get the injections. If it's chlamydia, you still take medicines. Medicines like uh, doxycycline of this world, they can treat chlamydia. If it's gonorrhea, kephalosporins can treat. Okay? Kephalosporins can treat gonorrhea. There are many medicines. Just go to the hospital and you get this treatment. Now, then another step I will talk about is that you now need to prepare. Because they say once bitten shy. If, you, if this happened to you, because this can happen in many situations, they can, it can happen in, 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 in rape situations, it can happen in you people, you, are people, I hear those people you call your besties, I hear I visited my bestie, things can happen, you know, you are, things can happen when the condom bursts, so all those things. Now, next time, plan, and now I'm going to give, to, to show you what a bag, these bags you carry, what they are supposed to have. So a woman's bag, even a man's bag, should have the following. So now take this as uh, the woman's bag according to Uthman's theory. <laughs> or, or we shall call it Uthman's bag. This is what it is supposed to have. Number one, every woman's bag must have emergency contraceptive pills. Your bag must have him because just imagine maybe you visited this person is far away there you don't have you don't you don't even have access to a pharmacy or a health facility that can give emergency contraceptions. I'm telling you, you can suffer. So in your bag, have emergency contraceptive pills if possible. Number two, <laughs> have PEP in your bag. This is a, a, a woman's bag. In your bag, your bag should contain the following. As a woman, to prepare. We are not saying that by having these ones, you go on and uh, you know, do whatever you want. No, but for preparations to avoid further uh, unprecedented circumstances. So, emergency contraceptive pills, PEP. Your bag should have an HIV test strip. You should have HIV test strips. And by the way, there are even these days uh, things are now better. There is what we call aura quick, where you don't even need to prick yourself. You just need to use uh, th that stick and put it, uh, 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 smear it on your gum and then test, do the test. So have an HIV uh, strip as a woman in your bag. So this is what is supposed to be in your bag. Okay, so you have, uh, then you can also buy, uh, if, if you can access them, there are some uh, stress strips for STIs. The ones we've mentioned, the syphilis, chlamydia, and, uh, and, and which one? And gonorrhea. If you can access some of the strips, you can buy, but at least these three must be there. Then the last one, which is the most important, must have condoms. So, as you're planning, as you're putting lipstick, as you're putting lip shiners, as you're putting makeup in your bag, 
make sure that this is part of your makeup. Because this is it's health. We are talking about health. Your health. You must protect it. The way you protect your, your face, the way you don't want any scratch on your face, the way you, you want to put all that makeup, the foundation and so on, this is very important to be in your bag because as a woman, as any person, you don't know when you may have sex. Any time you can have that rape, many, many things happen and so on. If it's your very first time to watch my videos or to watch this channel, please do not forget to subscribe and also press the notification bell in order to be notified of any important video we upload. And also become a member of Ask Dr. Uthman by joining. Become a, When you become a member, there are a lot of privileges for you uh, which you can, where you can enjoy a one-on-one -on -one chat with me on a video or on an audio call. And if you'd like to book an appointment, have a private chat, a private conversation, go to my website, www.drusman.com. Book an appointment. I'll be right there to answer you, to chat with you. And also, do not forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. The name is Ask Dr. Uthman. I sign out for today. I hope you've understood what to do when you have an accidental sex. Ask Dr. Uthman.